Hollow Knight Silksong may be one of the most anticipated games of 2025, and unlike any other title that reaches this level of popularity, this game has a truly native Linux version. As a longtime member of the Linux gaming community, of course I felt extremely happy to see the game and tried it right away. But after just 30 minutes, I was disappointed by the fact that the Linux version is just not as good. And it left me asking the question, why even bother making Linux native ports now? So the major problem that raised the question was that the game didn't have good controller support. In fact, it is not only not good, it is annoying to the point where I had to switch to the Windows version by turning on the Steam Play compatibility option to achieve a better gameplay experience. To put it into details, during the gameplay if your controller disconnects and reconnects again, the game won't recognize its left analog stick anymore. You will have to exit the game and relaunch to make the controller work normally, otherwise you will have to use the D-pad instead. If you are like me, using a Bluetooth controller for gaming, this would happen a lot. Even with my GameSir Cyclone 2 controller, which I have been using with the 2.4 GHz connection, once the controller goes to sleep mode, I can't get it back to work again. I googled the issue and found that many people shared the same or similar experience. Some also claimed that the controller would not function at all after reconnection. The only solution to this, ironically, is to run the Windows version via Proton. And so I did. The controller bug never happened again during my next hours of gameplay. The game runs at 120 frames per second on my laptop, which doesn't even have a discrete GPU. I also read that this bug was also on the original Hollow Knight game's Linux version, but it eventually got fixed later. It is also a known bug with games made with an older version of Unity. I am not a game developer, nor do I have any knowledge about programming, so I have no idea how difficult it is to get it fixed. Realising that the team behind Silksong is shockingly small, I won't be surprised that it would take quite a long time. Nevertheless, I should be grateful that they are providing a native Linux port, right? I have been thinking about this question during the whole time of playing the game. It just doesn't feel right. Yes, a native Linux version sounds amazing, but then you are hit by the fact that the Windows version runs equally as well, sometimes even better, on your same Linux operating system, with minimum efforts to get it running. Then, what's the point? Also, this is not a rare case where a Linux native game runs worse than via the Proton compatibility layer. In fact, I was surprised to find that not only many of them don't run well, they also sometimes have much bigger issues. For example, Metro Exodus would refuse to run in Wayland. You have to switch to X11 to run the native game, but if you decide to run the Windows version, all is fine. In Shadow of Tomb Raider, the native version doesn't support XESS or DLSS upscaling, although for most modern systems, they are not as necessary, so not a big deal. Some native games would just refuse to run at all for various reasons. On my desktop PC, I tried to run the native version of 2013 Tomb Raider, but no luck. Switching to Proton, the game just runs beautifully. There are also many titles suffering significant performance loss when running the native ports compared to the Windows version, like Seven Days to Die. I am sure there are at least some sorts of workarounds to get them running, but if you know there is another almost guaranteed way, which is only a few clicks and all it takes is several seconds time, then why bother even searching for the workarounds? In some cases, even when the native games run properly, there is something that would just make you think it is not worth it to run the native version. For instance, games like Dead Cells prioritize the updates on their Windows version, so you may see the native Linux version is a little bit behind on updates. This is usually not a deal breaker, but it does make you feel like a second class citizen. So now we have quite a complicated situation here. On the one hand, on Linux, with the help of Proton, we can easily play the majority of games, even though most of them don't provide a native Linux port. This is much better than, for example, Mac Gaming, where they can in theory run games using similar methods, but much more effort needs to be involved, and the results are also usually much worse. That's why earlier this year, Mac users were all celebrating the launch of Cyberpunk's native Mac port, which is an almost five-year-old title now. So in this regard, the landscape of Linux gaming is definitely much prettier than the other platform besides Windows. On the other hand, when we talk about Linux gaming now, essentially we are talking about running Windows games via Proton or Wine. So in the end, they are still Windows games, developed for the platform of the Windows operating system. The way I see Proton is that it's like a double-edged sword. 
It makes games much more accessible to Linux users, but on the other end, the developers now don't have to care much about Linux compatibility issues when making games, because the people who are working on Proton are going to take care of those issues. So the thing that concerns me is that I am not sure if it is a good thing that we rely so much on Proton and the people behind it. Many times we have a newly launched big title that runs day one on Linux, but occasionally there is this tiny issue, and a few days later, the hardworking people from Proton fix it. This whole process doesn't even involve the people who should be responsible in the first place, the actual developers behind these games. They only need to support the Windows users, and that's all. Leave those Linux users who pay exactly the same amount of money to the Proton guys. So why should I care? As a Linux desktop user for years, I really don't play a role here, other than playing these games. In an ideal world, Linux native games should be the gold standard, offering potential advantages like zero overhead performance, since we don't need to use a translation layer anymore, and maybe better integration with Linux. But in real life, if these native ports can't deliver the same experience as the Windows version, then the developers should just focus on perfecting the Windows version and let Proton take care of the rest. I think we are getting nowhere discussing this issue. Do we want native Linux games? Of course, yes, but only when they are actually good. Can they be as good as the Windows version all the time? Probably not, because due to the size of the Linux market share, developers likely won't spend as much manpower or resources on the Linux ports. The only hope is the continuous growth of the Linux desktop, whether by the increasing popularity of the Steam Deck or other Linux distros. Luckily, Microsoft has been doing great work driving users away in recent years, and countless internet celebrities are now promoting Linux as well. Right now, according to Steam's hardware and software survey, we are still below 3% as of August 2025, so don't expect things can be changed very soon. I do believe that Linux gaming has the potential to become the major PC gaming platform in the future, especially on the handheld market, because it just provides a superior experience. So what does this mean for us Linux gamers? Well, while we're waiting for that market share to grow, I think we should just make the most of what we have. Keep using Proton for its reliability and to play all those games. It's already done wonders for us after all. But don't ignore the native ports either, and maybe support the devs who actually put effort into them. Report those bugs when you find them. Share your experiences on places like ProtonDB. In the end, the more we get involved, the quicker we might see a change where native Linux games become the real deal, not just something tacked on. That's all for this short video. If you made it here at the very end, please hit the like button to support this channel. Thank you so much for watching.